This episode of Spectre Sound Studios is brought to you by DistroKit. Get your music online and out to the world today. Done is better than perfect. Good crumb. Do I need that written down and stapled to my forehead? Definitely words to live by. I mean, come on, man. Perfect is so great. I mean, like, check out Chinese democracy. That was over a decade in development. And it just blew away the entire world when it finally came out because it was perfect. Right? For all you guys who said Chinese democracy, what the hell is that? Yeah, that's kind of my point. Hey everybody, it's Friday. I hope you there sitting right there watching me are going to have an absolutely amazing weekend because that is what you deserve. Anyway, uh, this is my weekly show, you know, blah, 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 blah. Send me comments, send me, send me questions. If I find it entertaining or I can answer a question or something like that, I'd be more than happy to and put it on the show. So leave a comment below, get typing, get busy. Let me know what you think. Anyway. Let's get right to it. Why does this guy shield Chinese products so much? Are people really that cheap that they'd rather support a murderous regime than their local economy for an instrument that will literally live with you for years and bring you joy? Crass people are crass people. It doesn't matter where they're from. You buy local to support your community. These aren't PlayStation and, and Xboxes, people. Buy American to support your own backyard for fuck's sakes. Okay, so just going down that logic. So buying Chinese made PlayStations and Xboxes is perfectly fine, but guitars made in China are bad. Okay, thanks for bringing that up. That totally makes perfect sense to somebody. Not me, but I'm sure it makes sense to somebody. A thousand dollars, serious profit from almost slave labor. I'll be buying American for that price. Okay, of course you two were referencing my CJ guitar review that I did a few weeks back. It was a beautiful instrument that came from China. The Chinese are starting to make really nice instruments. And uh, if I was working in an American factory, I'd start to get worried about the future of my job unless the Americans start stepping up their quality game, that's for sure. Because the competition is going to be fierce uh, for your dollars. Um, it's very interesting to read this though. Um, I'll be buying an American for that price. This is Cool 555 Breeze. Uh, hey, uh, Mr. Cool Breeze, uh, your troll is showing because the way we spelt that was labor with a U, L A B O U R, which is a Canadian method of spelling that word. So uh, you'll be buying American. Yeah, nice try, pal. Just remember, I can smell a troll like a fart in a car. That was a dead giveaway. Try harder next time. So basically, it was really just output differences, not tone differences, except for some proximity at the extreme ranges. I can make up for that at the gain knob, so not really a difference in tone as opposed to a voltage output difference. Um, you're talking about myself and Colin Scott's latest video where we explored the whole uh, difference in pickup height thing just a little bit more. And you're absolutely right in your assessment. We don't really get a tone shift. We get an output shift, which can be easily compensated with by moving a gain knob. The interesting thing about pickups, though, is if you do want to get that tone shift, a parametric equalizer pedal will do the exact same thing. And that's something the pickup companies don't want you to know. I'm confounded by your solid research and my personal experience. I think I may have an idea of what's going on for many players. When I mic up my amp and record it, it doesn't sound much like when I'm sitting in front of my amp. It's like a tiny slice of the sound I hear out of my cab. If you add more mics, you get more of it, etc. I think it might be the same thing when you compare pickups recorded through my amp mic cab versus listening in the room. That is much like your video show, I can only hear the tiny differences in pickups through my recording room. But I think I can hear fairly dramatic ones sitting in front of my amp. Example, an EMG81 versus a JB through my recording rig is essentially identical. You can detect minor differences on a solo track, but not in a mix. These differences pickups sound massively different in person in front of the amp. We throw away a lot of information from the speaker with a typical guitar making setups. I'm trying to come up with a way to capture this, maybe a bunch of room mics. Well, that's just the thing. The part you're recording, that's the part that the world hears, and that's the important part. The part that comes over the mic, not the sound of you in the room. And that's the thing. Every single one of your favorite guitar sounds ever recorded went through a recording change and was only a quote-unquote tiny slice of what you're getting in the room. The in the room part, that's your relevant part. That's the part or that we shouldn't be worrying about. We we need to be worrying about the part that's coming over the mic because that's what the rest of us are hearing. So uh, focus on that and focus on making that the best you can possibly make it. And that means not throwing your money away on pickups because nobody's going to be able to tell the difference. I know everybody who ever bought a pickup just got really pissed off with that statement, but the research is in and uh, the numbers don't add up when it comes to uh, better pickups equals better tone. It doesn't really work that way. It's unfortunate and it goes against all that market but the evidence is kind of undeniable at this point. Just remember, guys, when you're recording, you're not hearing the acoustic properties of your guitar in the room. This part here, that doesn't come through. It's the part that gets picked up by the pickup and goes through the amp and is filtered through the amp and the speaker and the microphone and all the rest of the stuff that goes on to affect the tone. That's the part that counts. 
Spectre Sound Studios, studio engineer who only uses high output humbuckers with high gain amps, preferably with active pickups. Yeah, it's almost like we're a metal production channel or something. Fuck sakes, I don't see you going over to Rhett Schull's channel and bitching that he doesn't use eight strings. Fuck sakes, man, what are you gonna go do next? Go to a Christian evangelist church and bitch that they're not talking about Satan enough? Seriously, man, engage with fucking reality for a change, please. Fuck. Now, uh, why is it not said in the topic or description? Oh yeah, it's more views on clickbait. Oh yeah, we were explaining to that viewer that I'm talking in a strictly studio sense every video I do, and he's mad because I didn't say it was in a studio. It's like, wow, it's not like the channel's not called Spectre Sound Studios or something like that. Um, my apologies to Rockasia 9804. I mean, like seriously, dude, I am so very sorry. I didn't make that painfully obvious, like in the channel's title, and it's not there in every fucking response I give as well that it says Spectre Sound Studios. I thought you could have put two and two together like that, but apparently I gave you a little too much credit, so next time I will try and spell it out so even you can understand. My apologies one more time. Hey Glenn, I love the show, been a subscriber for a few years now, I always love watching. I do have an episode suggestion of, I think it would be cool if you did a collab with Linus Tech Tips and build the ultimate gaming music production setup. I think it would be cool to see and entertaining. Thanks for the awesome, and your guitar playing is getting great. Keep up the good work. Cheers from New Mexico. Well, hey James, thanks so much for writing. You know, that's a fantastic suggestion, you know, and I just took it up with Jake. Uh, he's part of the Linus Tech Tips team. Uh, we were at a YouTube event earlier this week, and a couple of the guys from the Linus team were there, and, um, you know, I was actually running some ideas by them, and they were definitely kind of a little bit receptive on. Uh, but here's the thing, if we really are going to make that happen, I need some help from you guys. You know, I not only need you to leave some comments on my channel saying how much you'd like to see a collab between myself and Linus Tech Tips, you need to go to Linus's channel and start demanding a collab with Spectre Sound. So if you guys could do that, I'd really appreciate it. Go ahead over to Linus's channel, click on some of his videos and say, hey Linus, when's the Spectre Sound collab going to happen? Let them know that you're out there and you want to see that happen and more than likely it will happen. Uh, we're kicking around a few ideas for an episode. I like that idea of the ultimate recording slash gaming setup. Uh, so you're going to need something really powerful in terms of processing and video crunching capability, but you're also going to need something quiet and that's the real trick finding that balance. And I think that would be a great idea uh, to do on that show. So once again, please head over to Linus Tech Tips and let them know you want to see that and hopefully we can make that happen. Hey Glenn, been a fan and subscriber for several years now. Wow, almost a decade. I'm a home hobbyist recorder. I've never been able to have a real drum kit in my room, so I've always finger played drums on a pad thing. I've also got Polly's a drum course from you, and it rocks, but I'd love to see as a course on something on how to really finger play drums on finger pads. Also, what's up with the Fender Tone Master Pro pedal? Review maybe, keep on rocking. Well, I don't think the finger pads thing's ever gonna happen for me because that's just not my style in the slightest. So just yeah, not gonna happen. Um, I can do always do real recording drums because that's my area of expertise, but finger pads, no, not the thing. Now regarding the Fender Tone Master, everybody got one of those but me. I mean, like a lot of channels did videos. They all come out the same day and whatnot. I didn't even hear about it until it came out. Um, so maybe Fender might've been afraid to send me one because maybe I'd be too honest. That might be. Uh, the reason I'm only hearing about it now after it's been released. Draw your own conclusions from that information. You guys uh, can put two and two together, I'm sure. If you're releasing music to the world, you need DistroKid. I've been using them since 2015 and they kick ass. If you want to get your tracks out to Apple Music, Amazon, Google Play, and Spotify, and even 150 smaller sites, then cough up a whopping $22.99 a year and you can keep 100% of your earnings. DistroKid also has tons of cool features like Spotify Hyperfollow for more followers, change your image on Apple Music and iTunes, and you can add credits and liner notes too. You can now list musicians, contact info, social media profiles, and hundreds of other roles. And what's really cool, there's now a mobile app so you can upload your music on the go, track your stats, and track your earnings too. DistroKid Splits allows you to pay your collaborators automatically by percentage so you can concentrate on making music instead of learning how to be an accountant. You can change your splits, plus add or remove collaborators at any time, and collaborators even get a 50% discount on their own DistroKid account. There's three levels of plans available, Musician, Musician Plus, and even one for labels. Sadly, there's no bass player, only one. They did make it simple enough for anybody to follow. I use DistroKid to put my music online, including this channel's theme song, The Eagle Has Landed, and I even got a license through DistroKid for that cover of Moon on the Water that we did a while back. And that's one of my favorite features, easy cover song licenses. What are you doing watching me? Get over to distrokid.com slash VIP slash Spectre today and grab yourself a 7% discount on your first year. DistroKid's the easiest way to get your music out to the world. Follow the link in the description below.
Now back to the show. All right, guys. Now, because the world's been a giant shit show over the last couple weeks, I didn't want to do butthurt of the week. I didn't want to do something super negative. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different. We're going to do the good vibes of the week. Can we hit the good vibes of the week music, please? All right, cool. So here we go. Um, I'm going to read this off right now because this really kind of made my day and uh, I just wanted to share this with the rest of you guys. Fuck me, Glenn. That mix sounds amazing. The drums sound incredible, but when you sold the bass on the console app, I literally yelled wow out loud. You're referencing my McDSP APB 16 demo. That's where they stuff like a 16 channel analog console into a 19 inch rack. Uh, I yeah, literally got the best mix I've ever done with that. The name of the band is called Sticks and Stones and we did a cover of the song River, which is from the second season of Vinland Saga. That's the theme song, and we did a metal version of it, and um, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Great band. They made it super easy to mix. Those guys can really play. Um, what's amazing is we got all these compliments uh, on that mix right here. They're just, they're just, I've never gotten those kind of compliments on a mix ever, so I'm definitely uh, gonna go in more of that direction on my mixing, I think, because uh, that turned out way better than I could have hoped, and yeah, it was just really something. Um, I did also want to make a note about that, and that is, you guys are reading all the comments on the mix here, that's without the video. The video should be out like in a week or so, so when that drops, it's going to be very interesting to see the comments from the APB16 video compared to the ones with the video proper. I won't be surprised if it gets deluged in hate comments, all I can say is, hey, before anybody saw the video, everybody liked the mix, so there we go. Anyway, if you're wondering what the hell that's all about, I'd highly recommend checking out the APB16 video, because it is an amazing piece of gear, and I really wish I could have kept it. Oh, well, that's just how it rolls, but I've got some very interesting news coming uh, from another mixing console company. So we might see a full-size console coming into the studio sometime, either at, by the end of this year or early next year. It's going to be some interesting stuff, that's for sure. I can't wait to show you guys what it's all about. Stay tuned for that. If I pay you extra for Monday Mix Review, can you pretend my submission is good? I cannot be bought. Songwriting is more important than guitar tone. Is this the best tone in the world, but the song is boring as fuck? You still wasted all that studio time. You're absolutely right. You know, we had an amazing fucking mix come on, uh, mix reviews there a couple weeks ago. It was some gent song. It sounded absolutely brilliant, but you know what? I can't for the life of me remember what the song sounded like. Good guitar tone alone is not enough to make a song memorable. I find it amusing that someone who frequently says samples are not a good substitute for learning to play drums is selling a robot-based program. Maybe bands should just make sure they all know how to play their instruments before deciding to record. Funny, that's exactly what I said when I started this channel! Hey, I'm curious, have you checked out any of the Ted Weber Tone Cult speakers? There's really not a whole lot of people out there using them, and I'm curious how they sound as a studio recording speakers. Uh, please do a video on them. Hey, you know what? I just reached out to Ted Weber, and they replied to me, and they asked me, hey, what kind of cabinet are you working with? We can make some suggestions. I thought that was super cool. So it's going to be a few weeks before that actually happens, but yes, I do want to get Ted Weber speakers on the show because I am all about trying out new speakers because uh, the Vintage 30 cliche needs to fucking end. Glenn, how do I get my band to sound different from everybody else? Try something other than Vintage 30s, you unimaginative fucks! Use your imagination, what's that? More than I would like to admit, sometimes I end up reamping a track nearly 100 times before realizing the first time was good enough. Uh, that is an answer to the question, have you ever tried reamping your guitar? And um, I was really surprised by that poll, actually. I was shocked by the sheer amount of people who've never done reamping. This is something I work with on a day-to-day -day basis, and um, it, it's, it's been that way since like 2005 for me. Um, if you're recording real amps and you're not using a reamp box, get one. That's all I can say. It's going to make your life a lot easier or a lot more complex. But the reamp boxes have definitely gotten a lot better, and um, I can prove it as well. I've done some measurements, and I still need to make that video showing uh, what reamp to, box to use and which ones to avoid, because there are some issues. If you don't get the right box, it can really fuck with your guitar tone and leave you scratching your head more often than not. So I'm guessing if you've reamped a hundred times and uh, not getting a tone you like, uh, you're probably using a certain one that I've grown to hate over the years. All right, guys, don't forget to check out DistroKid, especially if you want to get your music out there for the world to hear. It's the system I use. It's absolutely magnificent. Links are in the description below. And we got all kinds of st cool stuff coming up in the next week or two, including uh, going to be taking a look at the 5150 versus the 6505 92 original. Is there a difference in tone? How close is it? Hey, we even put it up on the bench and took measurements. Definitely an episode you don't want to miss if you're in the market for that 5150 cent. Anyway, hey guys, uh, before we go here, if you'd do me the favor of hitting the subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, it just helps the channel out and helps me get to my goals that 
much faster. I need your help to make that happen. And yeah, don't forget, head over to Linus Tech Tips and demand to see Spectre Sound on Linus Tech Tips. I think that's going to be an awesome episode. Anyway, you guys have an amazing weekend. I'll see you next time.